Hello everyone this is part 2 of what if Naruto was betrayed and turns evil, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below. Naruto was thinking about what Tsunami said, to start to give the people of Wave, hope, to revolt and become a better village, they should be fed and the buildings should be repaired. Let's start with food first, but where should I get food enough for a good 500 people? Thought Naruto. Then Naruto caught the smell of wild hog in the air. Getting a good whiff of the air, he could tell that there was many in the area, only spread out. Naruto got a dangerous smile on his face as he put on his claws. Let's get to work shall we? He though as he ran into the forest. Another side of the forest Kakashi brought Sasuke and Sakura out to the forest to talk about a couple things he's noticed in the group. He couldn't find Naruto, so he had to settle with these two. Alright you two, where did you learn those moves you used on the walk from Konoha to Wave? He said. Sasuke and Sakura started to sweat real bad. Naruto said that if they told people that they were training under him, bad things would happen. Just thinking about that made the two scared enough. Quickly thinking, Sasuke started off first. I've been training for years in my clan's Justsu, although I only have a small amount of Justsu and that they're only high D rank. Said a sweating Sasuke. Him, fair enough. Good job, Sasuke, you're turning into an exceptional shinobi. Then he turned to Sakura, what about you, Miss Haruno? Uh, well, I've been, uh, training with Ino's clan, she yelled. Oh really, for how long, said a curious Kakashi. Not too long, really. Only like a month before the academy exams. The only jutsu I learned was my doton, mud wall technique and I built my chakra control massively with then as well. She explained. Oh well that explains that, I just wanted to know that you all were taking your time in training and not rushing yourself, after all, you are still kids. You should enjoy your golden years while you have them. Anyway, I'm going back to the bridge with Tazuna. John. He said and disappeared in a body flicker. Thank God that's over with. Said Sakura as she sat down on the ground. Yeah, we couldn't let Kakashi find out about the training we've been doing, or we would suffer Naruto's wrath. He said and shuddered at the thought of Naruto's beatings. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go through that again. Said Sakura. She then looked up at the sky at the sky as the wind blew through her hair. We've changed a lot since we have been with him. She said. Yeah, you're right. Said Sasuke as he took a seat next to Sakura. Sasuke remembered that he used to be a asshole, like the Namika's twins, as he put down everything that even tried to come up to him. He only focused on getting stronger to reach Itachi. But now he knew that other things were more important than chasing after him. Sakura remembered that she was a major Sasuke fangirl, chasing after Sasuke with no other thing in mind. Sure she was smart, but she was weak in every other aspect of being a ninja. She was actually, and thank God for this, quieter than she usually was when she was training with Naruto. Naruto brought the best out of the both of him. You know, the only person who hasn't changed is Naruto. He has always been distant from everyone. Always alone, said Sakura thinking about what she heard this morning when she was listening in on Tsunami and Naruto's conversation. What do you mean? Said Sasuke and Sakura started to tell Sasuke everything she heard from the conversation this morning. Two hours later Wave Town Square. A line of Naruto's were walking into the middle of Wave. He had all kinds of dead animals with him. He killed wild hogs, deer, rabbits, almost anything you could find in the forest. He brought some kindle and big logs in also, to burn so he could cook his large kill. He also made plates from the stone that came out of the river, the water cleaning the stone of any impurities. Naruto built a large camp-like bonfire, and started to cook his kill, gaining a lot of attraction. What's that kid doing? asked a villager. I don't know, but damn that stuff smells really good, exclaimed another. Soon, a whole circle was around Naruto and his clones. Then, Naruto took out a marker, got some wood that was laying down and wrote. Get in line if you want delicious food. It said. As soon as people read that they got into a straight line and Naruto started serving them. This went on for a good two hours. People who haven't had food in days, now stuffed with meat in their stomachs with rations to spare. People actually started smiling and laughing, 
talking amongst each other, which hasn't happened in a long time. Kids were playing around in the streets like they just weren't struggling to survive a while ago. Naruto looked at this scene and frowned. What is this feeling I have? It feels so foreign to me. I can't describe it, thought Naruto. Then the people started thanking him, saying that this was just like a dream to them. One of the older women came up to Naruto. Excuse me boy, but what is your name? She said. Naruto. Ah Naruto, you're such a good boy for doing this for the people, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. She said. Then people started to cheer his name. Na Ru 2. Na Ru 2. The villagers yelled. Naruto's eyes widened when he heard this. A good boy, he said in his mind as he thought back to what Tsunami said to him. Naruto, you really are a good boy, you've just been hurt for so long that you don't open up to anyone, he replayed in his head over and over again. He started to breath heavy as he kept thinking. But Kurama-chan said that I was supposed to be evil-like to fit her image and become a good mate, a good demon. Why is it what Tsunami-san said and Kurama-chan said so different, he thought, not noticing the honorific he gave to Tsunami's name. Meanwhile Kurama was listening to Naruto's thoughts and didn't like them, not one bit. Tsunami-san. Tsunami-san. S-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-N-N-N-N-N. That bitch. What is she trying to do to Naruto? I swear if she tries to fill my man with these terrible thoughts of helping people and actually acting human, he might lose the love he secretly holds for me and for it to be sent to her instead, thought a very worried Kurama. She was going to have to do something about Tsunami really quick to make Naruto forget about what she said to him. I'll make my move tonight and handle the situation as quietly as I can, she thought with a smirk on her face. Back to the gathering in the middle of wave, the people were so busy partying that they didn't notice three of Gato's thugs come up with their hands on their blade sheath. What's going on here, said the thug in the middle, most likely the leader. It got dead quiet as the thugs walked around the people, who still haven't said anything yet. Then they noticed the food that everyone had. He grabbed a plate and raised it in the air. Who's responsible for this, he asked only to get no reply again. So, no one knows, he said as he started to get his sword out, scaring a few people. I did this, said a voice the thugs couldn't recognize. They started looking around for the owner of voice. Then when they heard it down here, they looked down to see Naruto, with a rabbit's foot sticking out his mouth, the same one he caught when he met Zabuza. The thugs didn't see Naruto because of how small he was. Even though he was a powerhouse, Kurama still couldn't understand why he was only 4 feet 11. The thugs looked at Naruto and started laughing at him. It was too hilarious to think that this little kid could have did all this. Why do you laugh? asked Naruto, there's no way a little pathetic little boy did this. He said. Then he did something that sealed his fate. He spit in Naruto's face. It was sliding down his cheek almost touching his hoodie, his precious hoodie. Did he wait a second what just did that just happen oh it did happen kill him. Screamed out Kurama from the mindscape. Faster than any could see, red chains came from Naruto's back and wrapped themselves around the three thugs stomach. He then squeezed them with so much force, he broke every rib in their bodies. The thugs were then dropped on the ground, making them scream even louder. Naruto then wiped the spit off him, then laid out some kunai. I'll let the villagers take care of you and walked away. The citizens grabbed the kunai and smiled at the thugs who were shaking in fear, their screams could be heard for miles. Naruto asked around for a builder of houses, which he found. They talk and Naruto said that he would offer his services, which made the man very happy. Naruto headed back to Tazuna's house after that. Tazuna's house dinner everyone was eating around the table. Tsunami made a big feast, because Naruto brought two deer that he helped her skin. The food is delicious, Tsunami, good work, said Tazuna as he ate with three plates in his face. Thank you father, but it was all Naruto who went and caught the food, and he helped me skin him really fast. She said with a smile towards Naruto. How did you do it, Naruto, asked a very full Kakashi. Naruto then showed him his longer than average nails. My nails are stronger than steel, they can cut through skin and flesh easily, I just use my claws because it's hard getting the skin from underneath them. Said Naruto and Sasuke and Sakura shivered knowing firsthand that what he said was true. The table was filled with laughter and smacking because of the delicious food that Naruto and Tsunami, but there was one person didn't like what was going on in the house. 
Why do you all care what happens to us? Said Anari and the table got dead quiet. Anari, stop. Said Tsunami, no, I don't understand why they came here. They say they came to protect Grandpa, but I know they're only in it for the money. These people don't know of our suffering. Living in those big ninja villages where they're all nice and protected, while we deal with people like Gato. Gato will just kill them when he wants to anyway. Said Anari. Anari, stop. They aren't here for money, they truly care about our problems. Why would Naruto do what he did if he didn't? Said Tsunami. Anari then pointed his finger at Naruto, who was ignoring the whole conversation over his rabbit stew, in which he found way more interesting. He's the worst of them all. He first came into this house with no emotions at all. I heard what you did at town today, but what you did won't last. When you leave, all that hope you gave them will go back down and everything will go back to being the same. Wave looking like a dead wasteland, he said, only to see that Naruto was still eating. Are you even listening to me? yelled Anari. Naruto took a deep breath, put his spoon down and looked at Anari with his red eyes flashing, you are annoying, I wish I couldn't hear you so I can continue to eat, but it seems you won't let this go. He then stood up and walked up to Anari, bending down to see Anari eye to eye. The reason I gave all those people food today was because of your mother saying it was a good way to give them hope. That hope will give them the necessary strength to rebel against Gato, strength they don't seem to have now. Next, I shall start rebuilding the broken houses that seem to take over Wave, and then I'll kill Gato. Said Naruto, surprising everyone in the room. What? Said Anari. I will kill Gato and everything that has to do with him. That's my plan to free Wave. Now, to me it sound like you don't want that to happen. You say that I don't care about Wave, but I've already done more than anyone has, including you. All you do is cry upstairs hoping that something would change, someone would help, but now that I'm here, you curse my name. Said Naruto as he then got right into Anari's face, scaring him in the process. You also said that I don't know what suffering is, when it should be switched around. Do you know who it feels to be betrayed by your family, your father sealing a demon inside you? Or how it feels to be beaten daily up to the age of six. How it feels to be stabbed, beaten with poles, sticks, anything that could cause pain. How about eating from the garbage and sleeping behind a dumpster with a newspaper as a blanket. How about living in a cell without seeing sunlight for two years. Or to be mentally tortured by the same demon your father sealed into you, him. Do you understand my pain? Can you comprehend how insane I really am? yelled Naruto as his fangs started to grow longer, his eyes flashing even more, an insane smile on his face. By this time Naruto backed Anari into a wall, releasing a key so strong that even Kakashi was frozen in place. Why aren't you talking boy? I told you the difference between you and me. My persecutors hurt me all my life, but the thing is, I got them back. I killed a mob of a good 55 people and smiled while I did it. I said eerily that I don't like flesh underneath my nails, but that time I didn't care, it felt good to feel their blood on my nails, my skin, on the same alleyway where they wanted to kill me. You, on the other hand, cry over a picture of your dead father, not changing a thing. So what I want you to do is that exact thing, go run away and cry. Naruto said with a smile on his face. He backed away to give Anari room, and as soon as he did, he ran upstairs, crying a storm. Naruto saw this and started laughing, scaring everyone with such a creep laugh. He then got the rest of his soup, drained it, and left out the house, but not before saying, time to start the second step. And left the house, still laughing. When the key Naruto was letting out was finally gone, everyone took a deep breath. Kakashi sensei, is what Naruto said true. About what he went through, she said and everyone looked at Kakashi. Yes, and what he said was just a idea of what he went through, he said and then got a deep breath and continued, and I was once one of them. He said with guilt. What? Why would you do that to him? Said Tsunami as she yelled at Kakahi. I don't know. I was passing by the alley and I heard something that pissed me off. Flashback alleyway in Konoha Kakashi was passing by an alleyway when he heard screams. He went inside the alleyway to see what was happening and saw a mob of people around a certain boy. That's what you get demon, we're going to finish what the fourth started. Then Naruto looked up and said, fuck the fourth, he's the one that did this to me, he screamed. 
When Naruto said that, a switch went off in Kakashi's head, how could he say something like that about his sensei? Kakashi pushed his way through the mob to be right in front of a young, bloody, Naruto. Kakashi saw red when he looked at him. Did you say, fuck the fourth? Sensei is a great person. Never say that around me. Suffer your punishment, demon. And Kakashi shoved a lightning blade in Naruto's shoulder, causing him to scream and pass out. The people were shouting out in praise of Kakashi finally killing Naruto, but he saw different. He saw the dead look in his eyes, the pain he went through, an innocent kid. Oh my god, what have I just done? Thought Kakashi. He quickly left then scene and went to his house to drink away what he just done. End flashback, I don't know why I did it. I just got so angry when he disrespected sensei like that, yelled an angry Kakashi. Does Naruto know it was you who did it, whispered Sasuke. I don't know, he hasn't said anything about it when I first saw him in the academy. I haven't seen him in so long and I didn't think I would have him as a student. Said Kakashi. Sakura was shaking in anger. How could he do that to Naruto? Naruto really is a good person, he just doesn't trust anyone, and it was because of people like Kakashi. Sakura then walked up to Kakashi, and with a chakra enhanced palm, slapped Kakashi right across his masked face. Smack. It was so loud, that Naruto even heard it in the forest. Sakura just looked at a surprised Kakashi, his cheek now bleeding bad from the hit. She just looked at him, and then turned around and headed towards the door. I'm looking for Naruto. And left. Sasuke soon followed her lead and left, not before giving Kakashi a Sharingan glare. What have I done? thought Kakashi as he went to tend to his cheek. Gato's hideout with Haku and Zabuza, won't be long now, in a few days, we'll go back and kill those leaf ninja and the bridge builder. Said Zabuza as he laid in his bed. Sure thing to San, I'll be there with you all the way. Said Haku. Thank you, my daughter. Said Zabuza. Zabuza found Haku more than eight years ago and treated her like his own. He loved Haku like the daughter he never had. Haku loved him back the same way, like the father she never had. Well actually she did have a father, but he killed her mother and then tried to kill her to because of her bloodline because he thought those with bloodlines were monsters, you all get what I'm saying. Then, the two heard something on their window. Haku got out her bed and turned on the light. Zabuza lifted himself up out of his bed and grabbed his kubakiri boko, ready for a fight. The window slide open and a figure came in, the hood of its hoodie over its head. Reveal yourself, yelled Zabuza. The figure lifted the hood of to show the face of Naruto. Gah, you. You're one of Kakashi's brats, said Zabuza. Yes, but I didn't come here for a fight, I come to talk. Said a calm Naruto as he raised his hands in surrender. What should we do to San? Asked Haku. Zabuza looked in Naruto's eyes for an deceit and found none. He then lowered his sword, nodding his head to Haku to lower her senban. All right, go ahead and talk, Gaki, said Zabuza. I will, but I must warn you, if you don't agree with what I say, I will have to kill you and your daughter. But if you agree, you won't have to be a missing nin and never worry about money again. Stated Naruto. Never worry about money again, that's all he had to say. Thought Zabuza. All right Gaki, tell us your plan. Said Zabuza. I will kill Gato whenever you come to attack us because I know he will not hold his side of the bargain you two had together. He plans to kill you too the day you attack my team, so he can get away without paying you. I will kill all of the guards, thugs, and free everyone that he has made slaves. I will then put them in Wave. I will take Gato's money and use it to begin to rebuild Wave, and give you triple of what he was going to pay you. Said Naruto. Triple, said Zabuza as his eyes held dollar signs in them. Haku's eyes just widened when she heard the amount they would be receiving. Yes, triple. But here is when you have something in the deal. I will make Wave my own land when I leave Konoha for reasons I can't tell you yet. But when I'm done with my mission here, I will find allies to send to Wave to start a new ninja village. One without corruption, where there is true peace. I shall lead it. The first allies I want are you and your daughter, Haku. You're both very skilled and can become stronger if you weren't on the run all the time. While I'm gone from Wave, you will protect it and the people I send over here. He said. But how will you send more allies over to Wave without rising suspicion? Asked Haku. I can only reveal that when I am sure that you are on my side. Said Naruto. 
Zabuza walked over to Haku and the two had a small discussion, and Zabuza came back to Naruto and stuck in his hand. All right, we agree with the terms, just keep your side of the deal and everything will go fine on our end. Said Zabuza. Naruto shook his hand. Good. Now I shall tell you the way how I'm going to send people over. Then brought out piece of paper with a red kanji for the word, nine, on it. With this I shall use my form of the Horatian and send people over to wave. Said Naruto. The Horatian. Who do you think you are, the fourth Hokage's son, exclaimed an ignorant Zabuza. Precisely, but he doesn't see me as his son, and I don't see him as my father. But other than that, the next time my team fights you, I'll knock Kakashi out and kill Gato. Said Naruto. What about the other brats? Asked Zabuza. Don't worry about them, I'll take care of them. That is all, I shall see you too soon, goodbye. Said Naruto as he disappeared in a red flash. Outside Tazuna's house Naruto was approaching the house, when he felt something wrong with his body. What's going on? Thought Naruto, Naruto. Said Kurama. Kurama-chan, said Naruto, Naruto, you know that I love you, right? She asked. Yes, then please forgive me for this, because I'm doing this for you. She said. Then, all of a sudden, Naruto fell on the ground, unconscious. Tsunami's room Tsunami was getting warm and started to sweat in her bed. She didn't know why, it was just early springtime, it shouldn't be this hot during the night. She then got out of her bed to get a thinner blacket, when she looked up to see Naruto with a smirk on his face. Naruto, she said drowsily. I'm afraid Naruto-kun won't be talking to you tonight, Tsunami team. Said Kurama, fully control of Naruto's body. What are you saying Naruto? Asked a nervous Tsunami. You're not talking to Naruto-kun, this is the almighty QB you're talking to now. Naruto is, asleep right now and I took over to talk to your man-stealing ass said Kurama. Tsunami suddenly jumped out her bed when she heard that she was talking to the same demon that hurt Naruto for so long. You're the one who's been hurting Naruto for so long. Torturing him, raping him, and for what, yelled Tsunami. To make him see my way of course, said Kurama, as she sat down on Tsunami's bed. To make him see my side of things instead of his own. Hurting him would only make him want to get away from you though, said Tsunami. Remember, I am a demon. I hardly know what kindness is. When I first got to Naruto, I was going to hurt him so he could submit himself to me, but Naruto has a stubborn nature, he won't give up. But trust me, soon he will give in to my influence. Said Kurama with an evil smile. That's terrible, he should be able to make his own decisions, be whatever he wants to be, not what you choose. That's why he is helping Wave, not because you told him to, it's because he wants to. Tsunami screamed out. That's what I want to talk to you about, Naruto has been thinking about what you said, about giving people hope, about being a good boy, but truly, Naruto isn't a good boy. Said Kurama. What do you mean? Naruto wants to destroy his village. He wants to destroy Konoha, and he wanted to do that before he even meet me. Said Kurama to a surprised Tsunami. Because of the villagers beating him, I know. That isn't his fault either, Naruto has never in his life done anything he wants to do, only listen or suffer from others. Said Tsunami. He doesn't need to. Yelled Kurama, all he needs is me, that's what I've been trying to show him, but he keeps denying it. All he needs to do is listen, which he doesn't do at all, she yelled. She then looked Tsunami in the eye, but he listened to you the first time you said something, and that is something I don't understand, she said. It's because unlike you, he can believe me and trust, faster than she could even see, Kurama wrapped a hand around Tsunami's neck. You say he can't trust me, he can't trust the person who was there for him, even if I did hurt him, it was for him to realize that the pain could stop if he would just listen. Dot. That's all that I ask. To listen to me and me only, no one else. I would never lie to Naruto-kun, I would always be there for him, even if he doesn't want me there because I love him, I am obsessed with him. Because just like me, he was the only person I could understand, to be discriminated for a reason not your fault, because of what you are, do you know how that feels, asked Kurama. She then let Tsunami go. She gained her breath first and then looked Kurama in the eye, eyes that were full of tears. The first time I talked to Naruto, we could relate on so many things, I actually felt normal for once. If I didn't like something, 
he didn't like it either for the same reasons. With Naruto, I never felt alone, and it's funny, cause I'm too old to remember the number of my age, but a six-year-old boy understood me fully better than anyone else. He is the person who taught me the words, friendship, and then, love. I don't want to lose him to anybody, in fear of those feelings going away. She then picked up a picture of Tsunami, Anari, and Tazuna, and some other man she couldn't recognize and didn't care about either, and showed it to Tsunami. You have a family that you love and cherish, something people wish they had. I am one of them, but take me seriously when I say this, stop filling Naruto's head with this silly idea of living his own life. He only needs me and I need him. She then walked right in front of Tsunami with a serious face, tears long gone, and if you try to take what makes me happy, she leaned in and whispered in her ear, I'll take away what makes you happy. So this is your final warning, stay away from Naruto. She said as she leaned away and left Tsunami's room. Three days later, things had changed in the household of the civilian family in Team 7. Sasuke and Sakura didn't stay around Kakashi when they needed to, which made him sad and feel even more guilt. He deserved this, his team doesn't trust him now. He really felt like shit. The other thing is that Tsunami started avoiding Naruto. The next morning after Kurama and Tsunami's conversation, Naruto tried to tell Tsunami that he was going to start repairing the buildings of Wave, only for her to say, that's good, and move away from Naruto, making him kind of sad. Naruto started building with a man named Shinichi, the local carpenter, and both started making houses. Naruto would get the wood from the forest that he would cut down with his favorite jutsu that me made himself, Fuyutan, tamed winds. This jutsu let him control the winds at will, with no motions at all, and make invisible wind blades to tear through his enemies. With this and his shadow clones, Naruto and Shinichi were building many houses and repairing broken down ones in a flash. But even through all that, Tsunami didn't praise his efforts. Naruto asked Kurama what she did when he fell out, and all she said was that she was making improvements to his body to handle more of the yokai that he was making, which he bought, not noticing the lie she was telling him. The second day Naruto was really wanting to get some good sleep, but the Uchiha wanted to talk to him about his past, but feel asleep while he was talking. The next morning, Kakashi left with Sasuke and Sakura to protect Tazuna for the last time as today was the day that the bridge was finished. Naruto was still asleep when the team left, so he didn't get there on time. Something did wake him up, though. Tazuna's house, ZZ, snore, ZZ. Come with us lady, or we'll hurt the kid, Ka-san. Don't worry Anari, just go back inside, Ka-chan will handle this. ZZ, ZZ, snore, im, arrange us, ZZ. Let's go. No. ZZ. Dot huh. What's that noise? Outside the house, get out of here kid, said a thug that was dragging Tsunami away. No, I won't let you take my Ka-chan away. I won't run away anymore, shouted Anari. Then Dai, charged the other thug with his sword drawn. When he was about to kill Anari, his head fell from his neck, the same happened to the other thug. In the middle of the scene was Naruto, his black hoodie and cargo shorts sprayed with their blood. He looked at Tsunami that was still scared. She saw Naruto and started to back away from him, seeing him with the blood all over him with that dead look made him look scary to her. Naruto, though, took this the wrong way, so she fears me, just like everyone else. That must be the reason why she stopped talking to me, because she realized what I am, I thought she would be different. Thought Naruto as he looked at Tsunami. He pushed those thoughts away and looked at Tsunami and asked, where is the Hitaki? He and my father went to the bridge this morning. She said. Before she said anything else, Naruto vanished in a red flash. On the bridge dam this guy is good. Thought Sasuke as he faced Haku in her dome of ice mirrors with some senban sticking out of his body, also not knowing that Haku is a girl. You fight well, your Sharingan has helped you greatly in battle. Said Haku in one of her many mirrors. Haku then jumped out the mirror to the right of Sasuke to hit him, only for him to block it with a kunai. She grabbed another senban and tried to stab it into his midsection, only for Sasuke to grab Haku's wrist and lifted it up, and tried to stab her underarm, only to feel a senban in his back. What? He said as the Haku he stabbed turned into ice. You faced my clone that time, which I set up to lower the guard on your back, which worked wonders. Now please forgive me for this, but you must die. Thousand flying water needles of death, she yelled as she sent loads of senban at Sasuke's body. 
Then, all the Senbans got blown away by a strong gust. A small tornado appeared in the middle of the dome, and when it died down, it was Naruto in the middle. Huh, nice entrance, said Sasuke. I will handle the situation, said Naruto. Naruto then had chains come from his back, surprising both Haku and Sasuke. He then made them wrap around to make little drills. Chakra chains, drill form he announced and they launched themselves into Haku's mirrors. One by one the mirrors were destroyed, until there was only one left. Haku then walked out the mirror and took her mask off, revealing a very surprised look. How strong are you? she asked. Not strong enough. This battle is over, said Naruto as he walked into the mist to go see Zabuza and Kakashi's battle. On the other side of the bridge, it's time for you to die, Zabuza, said Kakashi to Zabuza that was held down with dogs that Kakashi summoned. Kakashi charged up his lightning blade, and shocking Zabuza in the process. What kind of jutsu? I can see the chakra he is putting into it. Thought an amazed Zabuza. It's time, lightning blade, yelled Kakahi as he charged towards Zabuza. He was about to stab Zabuza, when a hand caught his wrist, stopping him in the process. Naruto, what are you doing? asked Kakashi. But Naruto wasn't worried about that, he was more worried about the jutsu that Kakashi still had active. This is the same jutsu. The same one, just like it was that day, said Naruto. He then looked up at Kakashi. Kakashi now realizing what Naruto was seeing, cancelled the jutsu and pulled his hand back. Naruto, I can explain, said a very worried Kakashi. Naruto was looking at Kakashi with wide eyes, not believing what he just found out. I knew I've seen his face before, I just didn't know where I saw it. But now that I know, it makes me hate him and Konoha more than ever. He thought. Naruto quickly knocked Kakashi out by chopping him on his neck, now remembering the situation he was in, but he was angry, and he needed something to take it out on. Thanks a lot there, Gaki, for a second I thought I was actually going to die. Said Zabuza as he freed himself from the dogs Kakashi summoned earlier. He then released his mist jutsu to reveal Haku and Sasuke walking over, Sakura still protecting Tazuna, and the mob of thugs on the other side of the bridge with Gato himself, clapping. Wow, I can't believe that you're still alive, Zabuza, those leaf ninjas failed to kill you. But that's alright, my thugs will kill you now and take over wave, preminently, laughed Gato and his cocky thugs. Naruto, remember when I said that you could kill later, asked Kurama from his mind. Yes, said a very angry Naruto, have fun, was all she said. I shall, yelled a now crazy Naruto as he charged towards the mob, claws now equipped on his hands. Kill him first, show them who's boss around here, yelled Gato to his thugs as they also charged towards Naruto. Kill them all, yelled a finally crazy Naruto. Tazuna, Zabuza, Haku, Sasuke, and Sakura could only watch as Naruto tore through the crowd of thugs with his claws. One after one the thugs would lose body parts and they would be thrown all over the bridge, with Naruto in the middle of it all, having the time of his life. Naruto ran towards a group of thugs that were trying to get away from the demon boy, and without hand seals, Naruto casted a jutsu. Fuyuten, uphill current, he yelled as the group of thugs were then launched into the air. Fuyuten, downhill current, he yelled again and the thugs were then caught into two powerful crushing wind currents that were killing them with the pressure. Naruto then brought both of his palms together, die, and the thugs' bodies exploded from the pressure of the two currents, blowing the body parts everywhere on the bridge. Fuyuten uphill current, he yelled and all of the other thugs, including Gato, rose from the ground and into the air. Fuyuten, tornado killer, he said and watched with a mad smile as a tornado was formed and inhaled all of the thugs and the wind blades cut through all of the them. When the jutsu was cancelled, it was raining blood in the area that Naruto was in, and he was taking it in with a true smile on his face. This feels so good, even better than what it was six years ago. Thought Naruto. He then thought about what Tsunami and the old lady in the village told him. You're a good boy, Naruto. Their voices rang through his head, but he kept smiling. No I'm not, I'm a bad boy, I am, though, a good demon, he thought as he threw what Tsunami said about him away. She didn't seem to care about him these last few days, so why should he? Kurama was hearing these thoughts with a smile on her face. Good, I've successfully gotten rid of Tsunami, she said to herself. Naruto then ran off the bridge to Gato's hideout, there was still more people to kill. He, he did it. 
he killed Gato, screamed Tazuna in glee, already forgetting what Naruto just did. I have to go tell everyone, he said as he ran back into town. Sasuke, Sakura, Haku, and Zabuza were still in staying in the same place they were at the beginning of the massacre. That boy is too strong, but I'm glad to have him as an ally, thought Gato. Deep in forest Gato's hideout Naruto ran into the hideout, killing everyone he saw, and was having so much fun. So much red covered the walls and it looked good to him. He continued this until he ran into the only ninja in the hideout. You, stop there. I shall destroy you and bury you alive with the help of Ranmaru, yelled Reiga Kurosuki, the owner of the twin thunder swords, Kiba. Die. Lightning ball, he said as he sent a ball of lightning from his swords. Move out of my way. Tamed winds, said Naruto as he sent an invisible blade of wind through the jutsu and sliced the man and the innocent boy on his back in half. Naruto then stopped his tyranny for a couple seconds as he looked at the twin Kiba swords, and sealed it into a seal on his arm and continued to kill everyone there. Twenty minutes later and now Kama Naruto stood in front of Gato's open vault of money, as he killed everyone in the hideout. He then looked at all the gold in the vault, his fox instincts now taking over. Shiny gold, he said in wonder as he sealed everything in the vault in a master scroll. He then walked to the bottom of the hideout to see the holding cells revealing people behind them. Please help us. One woman said not seeing the blood all over Naruto's cloths. I shall, stay back from the lock. He said as all the prisoners walked away from the door. Suddenly, all the locks broke down, thanks to his wind jutsu. Everyone ran out and thanked him for freeing him, but he paid no mind to it. Follow me to wave, you shall live new lives because of me. I made Wave a better place and killed Gato off. He said and the people yelled with happiness because of his feet. Naruto did forget to tell him to cover the children's eyes as they walked through the carnage. Oh well, he didn't care. Two days later the bridge was complete, and also cleaned of the blood and body parts that littered it. Tazuna told everyone what Naruto did for them, and everyone loved Naruto. Naruto wouldn't be able to walk through town with being stampeded by people who were saying their thanks, or some of the females that ran after him. Naruto never talked to Kakashi when he woke up. It turns out Naruto never knew that it was Kakashi who attacked him in that alleyway that day. Every time Kakashi tried to talk to Naruto, Naruto would only blast him with a key so strong, it would make a cage shit his pants, and Kakashi was no cage-level ninja. The only people Naruto would spend time with was Sasuke and Sakura. They would eat together and talk together, only Naruto wouldn't reply to the two a lot. Things with Naruto and Tsunami only got worse. Naruto walked up to Tsunami after he freed the prisoners of Gato's hideout, and told her that she was afraid of him now that he knew what he was. He said he saw the look of fear in her eyes as he came back to the house, his cloths and hair filled with the blood of his victims. Inari, on the other hand, thanked Naruto. He said that he was a fool to cry and not do anything for his people, and said he would be strong like Naruto and protect his grandfather and mother now, which Naruto almost smiled at. Naruto also gave Sasuke the twin lightning blades, Kiba. He said that it was, surprisingly when dealing with Naruto, a reward for dealing with Haku as he did. He actually congratulated Sasuke, which made Sasuke smile, knowing that he has gotten stronger if Naruto was telling him that. Speaking of Zabuza and Haku, the two stayed in a house in Wave, but didn't let anyone other than Tazuna know this. He told Tazuna his plan to protect Wave, in which Tazuna agreed too. Now Wave was getting ready to properly thank its hero. Middle of town with Tazuna on top of a stage, R, testing 1, 2, 3. Can you all hear me? Alrighty, then we're ready to proceed. We are here to thank the person, I mean people, who came to help Wave in its time of need. Without them, we would still be rolling around in our own filth. So introducing our heroes. First, these people. Then a curtain on the left side of Tazuna field down to reveal Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura. Villagers response clap, 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 who are those people? I don't know. Why is the tall one's hair defying gravity? Clap, where the fuck's Naruto? One person yelled. Back to Tazuna, ah, yes, thank you for that show of thanks. Now, for Wave's real hero, Naruto. Then the curtain of the right side of Tazuna fell down to reveal Naruto and a man behind him. The man then raised Naruto underneath his armpits, showing him to the crowd. The villagers response, Naruto. Let's go Naruto. 
I love you Naruto. I want your baby Naruto. Whoever said that shall die, yelled Kurama from Naruto's mind. You're the best Naruto. N-A-R-U-2. 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 N-A-R-U-T-O-P-L-U-G. All right Naruto, that's the C-H-A-R-C-T-E-R that everyone loves. Apparently, the villagers love Naruto a lot. Back to Tazuna. Yes, thank you, Naruto. It's because of you and no one else that Wave is a better place, said Tazuna, basically forgetting about Sasuke, Kakashi, and Sakura, making them all sweat drop. Now please enjoy the festival in honor of our hero, Naruto, yelled Tazuna as everyone yelled in approval. Naruto was looking as this happened, seeing everyone cheer for him, but they knew what he did. He killed so many people, but they didn't care. So why would Tsunami get scared of him after he only killed two people in front of her, he didn't understand why. While people were thanking him, saying that he was their hero and that they loved him. Naruto never smiled once, not hearing it from the person he really wanted to hear it from. Tsunami next day, on the bridge today was the day Team 7 returned to Konoha, and none of the villagers wanted to see Naruto leave, but it had to be done. They were standing on the bridge, while some of the villagers were saying the goodbyes, when they were done, Anari came up to Naruto. Ah, Naruto, thank for everything. I'll keep my promise and to stop crying, honest, he said to Naruto. I'll hold you to it said Naruto with his regular dead voice. Then, Anari hugged Naruto's midsection, him being shorter than him. I love you, Oni-san, said Anari as he let go and ran away, not wanting Naruto to see his tears. Oni-san, he called me, brother, thought a wide-eyed Naruto. After Anari left, Tsunami walked up to Naruto, causing him to glare at her, red eyes flashing. She ignored him though and kneeled down to Naruto's height and looked him dead in the eyes. She then leaned in and kissed him on the cheek, leaving Naruto and his team wide-eyed. Thank you, and please understand why I didn't talk to you after you read this. She said as she stuck a piece of paper inside Naruto's hoodie pocket and ran off. All right team, it's time to go. Say your goodbyes, said Kakashi, and with waves, they left wave. You know, said a Shinichi, the man who Naruto helped build homes in wave, to Tazuna, we still have to give the bridge a name. Let's name it, the Great Naruto Bridge, to honor the person who freed us. Said Tazuna. Great Naruto Bridge, him, said Shinichi, as he looked at Naruto's back as he was walking away, I like it. He said. Nighttime the team made camp to take a good night's rest. Kakashi, Sakura, and Sasuke stayed in tents, while Naruto dug a hole in the ground saying, foxes sleep in dens, not tents. He then pulled out the letter Tsunami gave to him earlier. It read, Naruto, please forgive me, I haven't been talking to you. But it isn't for reasons you believe. Five days ago, you were asleep and the QB took over your body. She told me to stay away from you or she would kill the only family I had left. I had to listen, and it hurt me because I saw the hurt look in your eyes when I wouldn't talk to you. Please forgive me. Also, I want you to hear one of the things I talked to the QB about. We got into an argument about you, and I said the reason you listened to me was because you could trust me, but that's when the QB snapped. She said that she wouldn't let anything happen to you because you saved her. You saved her from her own loneliness. You were the only person in the world that she could talk to, relate to. She felt normal around you, she loves you because she feel in love with you, Naruto. You made her fall in love. She would tell you that she saved you from the village's attacks, but you did more for her than you realizes. If you two can work out your differences, you two could become true lovers. Please give her a chance. Lastly, you told me that your mother hates you, well let me be your mother. The next time you see me, call me Ka-chan, not Tsunami. Thank you for reading, I love you, Naruto-kun your Ka-chan. Tsunami. Comma dot comma dot dot comma dot dot comma dot. Naruto couldn't talk as the tears going down his eyes would get into his mouth if he would open it. Naruto then entered his mindscape. Mindscape Naruto was standing across from Kurama. She was looking at him with eyes that only held love. Everything she said in that letter was true, I told her to stay away, she couldn't finish her sentence as Naruto jumped up and hugged Kurama with everything he had, crying in between her breast. 
Kurama was surprised at first, but then held on to Naruto with a loving embrace, no pain at all. I love you, Naruto. She said. Maybe I should start to treat him right, like Tsunami said. Thought Kurama. I don't know if I love you or not. Said Naruto. Kurama just looked down at Naruto while he was crying. Never mind, if he doesn't love me, I'll just make him. He'll love me sooner more than later. Thought Kurama with a dark smile while looking at Naruto. Time skipped three weeks the team returned the next day to Konoha, and things quickly settled down. Kakashi went to Minato give the mission report, and everyone else went their separate ways. The team would still have missions, just not as big as the wave mission. Sasuke would secretly train with his new Kiba swords that Naruto gave him in wave. The team still hated Kakashi, and every time he would ask for forgiveness, Naruto would just turn his head. Now the team were getting ready for a new challenge. East side of Konoha Team 7 meeting place Naruto was looking at the Chunin exam sheet he would have to sign to get participate. He really didn't want to participate, but to have an opportunity to get new allies, he would have to take this chance. Sasuke was looking at the sheet with a flame in his eyes. He would fly through the competition and challenge Naruto, and even though he would lose, he wanted to fight Naruto with everything he had. Sakura, on the other hand, wasn't so sure. So yeah, she has gotten stronger these past few months, but it's a big world. She wouldn't know if she could handle ninja outside of the village. Sasuke and Naruto were already signing their papers, so she did so also. All right everyone, you need to be at the academy at 9 o'clock in the morning sharp to participate, understood, said Kakashi with an ice smile. When he didn't get an answer back, he took a deep breath. All right, listen to me. I know we haven't been on the same page since you found out about me, which I can understand. But please, just give me another chance to be the sensei that you all need. I'll be better, I'll even come to our meeting place early, just give me another chance pleaded Kakashi. Those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon their friends are worse than trash. That's what you tell us, but you are a hypocrite to own word, I don't want a sensei like that. Said Sasuke and Sakura shook her head in agreement. If that is your choice, just know that I'm proud of each of every one of you, goodbye for now. He said as he disappeared in a body flicker. Naruto then stood in front of Sasuke and Sakura, getting their attention. We shall get to the academy early, I want to see all the competition before everyone else. He said. What time do you want to be there? Questioned Sakura. Six in the morning, that it is. He said and the two agreed. Sasuke walked to the Uchiha compound, while Naruto and Sakura took the same road home. Inside Konoha, boss lady, Sakura. Boss lady, Sakura, yelled of trio of youngsters running up to Sakura. Oh no, not these kids. Huffed Sakura. The three that ran to Sakura were Konohamaru, the grandchild of the third Hokage, Udon, and Mogi, making the Konohamaru core. Boss Lady Sakura, you're going to play ninja with us today, right? Asked Konohamaru, but Sakura was trying to hush him from Naruto hearing that. Play ninja. Sakura, you are still too soft, playing ninja when you are a ninja. Naruto said to Sakura with a glare that made her shiver. The three academy students then noticed Naruto. It's the demon, they all yelled and hid behind Sakura. Do something about it, boss lady Sakura. Sakura wasn't paying attention to them though. I'm sorry Naruto, they are young and don't know better, please forgive them. She said. Then Konohamaru decided to deal with the situation himself. Take this demon, and threw a rock at Naruto, but it never reached him as the rock was cut up into dust by Naruto's jutsu, scaring the younger children more. I show no mercy to those who attack me, even children. Said Naruto, as he was walking towards them with evil intent. Run, said Sakura, as she pushed the children in the opposite direction, running from Naruto's wrath. Konohamaru turned a corner, but hit something, which made him fall down. He was then lifted up from his scarf in a painful way. Hey brat, that hurt, you should apologize. Said the boy. Please, let me go. He's coming to get me yelled a very scared Konohamaru. Stop moving kid, yelled the boy again. Konohamaru actually got himself free from all his moving and left the area with Udon and Mogi. Sakura then turned the corner to see the ninja. Where did Konohamaru, Udon, and Mogi go? She asked. Those brats. Ran off like the cowards they were. Fucking kids. The boy said. 
Don't call them that. Then Sakura noticed the ninja's headbands, Sand Ninja. You must be here for the Chunin exams. She said to them. Yes we are, and we plan on winning. Said the girl from behind the boy. Naruto then came around the corner, see Sakura talking to foreign ninja, so he decided to worry about the kids later. Who are you? Asked Naruto to the ninja. It's only right to give your name when asking for someone else's name. Said the girl. Well, I wasn't raised, right, so I'll ask again, who are you? Said Naruto. TCH, I'm sick of this kid, I should kill him now to get rid of future competition. Said the boy as he got something wrapped up in bandages from his back. Are you really going to use Crow for something like this? Said the girl. Then, a rock hit the boy's arm, causing him to comfort it and look up in the tree, revealing one Sasuke Uchiha. People causing trouble already. You don't want to go up against Naruto, he will kill you with no hesitation. He said. TCH, there's rats everywhere. Maybe I should, stand down, Kankuro. You are a disgrace to our village, keep talking and I'll kill you. Said a boy in the same tree as Sasuke. Gara, they were the ones who started it. No need to. Silence, now, was all Gara said as he appeared on the ground, in front of Naruto. I was wondering when you were going to stop hiding behind me. Said Sasuke as he jumped down bedside Naruto on the right, Sakura on his left. Forgive my siblings, they are just cocky for the exams coming up. Keep them in control and we won't have a problem. Said Naruto. The two had a stare down, now even blinking, for a while, until Gara spoke. My name is Gara of the Sand, these are my older sister and brother, Kankuro and Temari. Naruto then spoke up. My name is Naruto, and these are my two teammates Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno. I look forward to the battle we have in the Chunin exams, number one. I also look forward to it, only your blood shall be shed, number nine. Said Gara, him and his team walking away. Him, I want to kill him. Said Naruto, making Sasuke and Sakura shiver. Naruto then looked back at a tree, that was held some pulley stealth ninja, and blasted it with ki, and walked away. In the tree the three sound ninja that were hiding in the tree were now sweating bullets, trying to catch their breath. What was that? Said Dosu, the hunched back of the group. I don't know, but I think it came from the short blonde kid. Said Kin, the only female of the group. We should watch our back against those two teams. Said Zaku, the last boy on the team. Morning at the academy Sasuke and Sakura saw Naruto approach them. It was six o'clock, on the dot. With a nod of his head, they all entered into the academy. There was no one in the academy, so they took to the stairs up to the second floor. The pasted by the two hidden join in, acting as genin, without a word. A team this early, and they noticed the genjutsu that fast. They're good, the man thought. The team passed through the double doors where the first exam would be, to see no one there. Everything was going according to plan. Sasuke posted up on the side of the wall, his arms crossed. Sakura sat down in a chair, crossing her arms and leaning her head on them. Naruto laid down on top of the table, not caring about anything else. Three hours later the team started coming in and Team 7 was the first to see them all. There were some good-looking competition, but nothing the team couldn't handle. Naruto extended his senses in the room to get a feel of something he was sure of. There were three Jinchuriki in this room. I can sense it from Gara and that green-haired girl over there. I will need to get in closer to tell which one she holds, but I'll deal with that later, thought Naruto. Then the doors busted wide open to reveal his brother and sister, Menma and Mito, along with their teammate, Sai. Hello losers. My name is Menma Azuamaki Namikas, and I'm going to win the Chunin exam, believe it. Menma yelled. Mito then hit him on the back of his head, in fury. You idiot, you just made us a target to EV1 here, yelled Mito even louder than Menma. The two got blasted with the combined key of everyone in the room, making them shake, but all of a sudden, the key disappeared. Our delicious killer intent, I so love the ability to absorb it and add it to my own power. Thought a happy Naruto. Naruto watched as his brother, sister, and Sai joined the other Konoha idiots. He saw that even though they didn't want to, Sakura and Sasuke got brought into their conversation. So how is it being with the demon all the time, Sakura-san, Sasuke-san? said Mito. Clenching his fist in how she referred to Naruto, he said, he is all right. 
he doesn't get in the way and doesn't ask a lot of questions, unlike some people. Said Sasuke to Mito. J. No need to be mean. I couldn't stand to be with him. Ka-chan told me that he would only hold us back if he was on our team. Just being around him gives me the creeps. Said Mito. You say that like he isn't your brother. Sakura said to Mito, but Menma jumped in. That thing isn't our brother, he is the QB only with no power. Look at his eyes, they are red, but when Naruto was born, they were blue. There's no way that he isn't the QB. Said Menma with Mito agreeing with everything her brother said about Naruto. You all should lower your voices, people will think you're getting cocky with all that loud talking you're doing. Said a boy with silver hair and glass. Who are you? Said Menma. I am Yukashi Kabuto. This is my seventh time taking the exams. Said Kabuto with a smile. This is your seventh time, man you suck, said Kiba with a laugh. Not that, it's just that the exam is very hard to pass. Said Kabuto, being the good person I am, I'll let you all get an idea of your competition with these. Said Kabuto as he showed them cards. What are those, Kabuto-san, asked Sakura. Ninja info cards, information on every participate of this exam. If you're interested in someone in this room, said Kabuto. Rock Lee of Konoha, and Gara of the Sand, from Sunagaku. Said Mito. While he was telling Mito and Menma of the people she asked for, Sasuke was having a conversation. Sakura, should we ask about Naruto? He said to Sakura. No, I don't see what help it would do, we know Naruto better than anyone, so we know Kabuto can't have any information on him that we don't know about. She explained. I know. It's just, he then looked at Naruto who was sitting on the other side of the room, if we get far in the exams, there is a strong chance that we will have to fight him. He said. If I'm parried up to fight Naruto, I would just surrender. There's no point in fighting a battle you know you can't win. She said as she went back to talking to Ino. Naruto was almost put to sleep by the competition. There was no one here that interested him, other than his fellow Jinchuriki. Naruto. He heard from behind him. He turned his head to see Mito and Menma, his dear brother and sister, with cocky smirks on their faces. Hey Naruto, how far do you think you're going to get in the exam, huh? After all, you haven't been trained by Ka-san or Tu-san all your life have you? Yeah, you're probably as weak as those genin from that new sound village. He said with a laugh, not noticing Dosu running up to him. He ran up to Menma and Mito and tried to punch them both, only for them to dodge the last second. Ha, your noth Menma then fell on the ground, with his sister, as they felt disoriented. You may want to watch your mouth, I don't care who you are, you won't disrespect the sound village. Said Dosu, and Zaku and Kin came up behind him. The Oto team will win the Chunin exams, no matter what. Said Zaku, enjoying the pain faces that Mito and Menma had on the faces. Then a cloud of smoke appeared in the front of the class, with it came dozens of Chunin and one Ibiki. Calm down. No fighting or you will be dismissed from the exams, he yelled. Sorry, just got a little excited, said Dosu, and him and his teammates went back to their seats, not before giving Naruto a look of curiosity. Naruto then looked at a still recovering Mito and Menma, and with a smirk he commented. If being trained by the Hokage and his wife gets you beat by random Genin, then I don't want their training. He said and left the two on the floor. During the test Ibiki had explained the test, and Naruto, being a natural trickster, already got what he was trying to say, he had to cheat to pass the test. He used his control over the wind to feel if anyone was moving their pencils, and noticed the person behind him by two seats writing with a fast pace. Naruto then smiled. First test cleared, he thought as he wrote what the shifts in the wind told him to. Tenth question, all right, the tenth question is now here. But before you all answer it, let me say this. Those who answer wrong will never be able to take the Chunin test again, said Ibiki. What? That's not fair. There are others who have taken the test before, yelled Kiba. To bad, I'm the one administering the test this year. The only way to save yourself is to leave and take the test next year said Ibiki. One after one, teams would start to leave. Sasuke and Sakura wouldn't dare raise their hands, or they would probably die from Naruto. After the team stopped leaving, Ibiki then spoke up. Good, those who are still here have passed the first test. He said getting shouts of an explanation. 
The questions on the test are too hard for a genin to answer, so you had to cheat. But if you got caught, you would be sent out of the room, that's why I had Chunin around to see if you all were bold enough to cheat. He said. But then what was the point of the tenth question? Asked Temari. It was to see if you all would take the risk at continue or to go home and take it next year. Only the brave and sneaky would have been able to pass the exam. He said. Then, a window broke open and a figure came through. Two kunais were thrown into the ceiling to spread a banner that said. The sexy and single, Anko Matarashi. All right, Gakis, I'm your next exam protector. Anko Matarashi, she yelled. She looked around the room and counted the teams. 52 teams. You're losing your touch, Abiki-san. She said. He came from behind the banner to talk to Anko directly, we have a talented group this year. He says. Him, that's all right. When I get through with them, I'll cut the numbers in half. She said as some people gulped in fear. Follow me to the next exam area, the Forest of Death, and she jumped out the window. Forest of Death entrance, welcome to my playground, or the Forest of Death to you. This is where you all shall fight to the death to survive. She said, making people shake in fear. But first, everyone must sign these waivers stating that Konoha isn't responsible for any deaths during this and the other parts of the exam. She said as he started to hand out the forms. After everyone signed them, she continued. Here, you will have a scroll, either, heaven, or, earth, and you need to get another one from another team, meaning you have to fight. You won't know which scroll other teams will start with, which means you will have to be lucky to find the one you need first. She said. What about food? Asked Choji. There are all types of animals for you to find in the forest, just make sure you kill them before they kill you. Said Anko with a smile. And remember, the only rules are, there are none. Use any kind of strategy, sick plan, killing, anything to get to the tower in five days. She said and then ushered the genin to the gates. Once the genin was stationed at the gates, Anko's voice could be heard from the intercom. Alrighty Gakis, the second exam starts, now, and the gates flew open. Inside the forest team 7 were going through the forest with a fast pace at hand, wanting to get a scroll early. So who should hold the scroll, asked Sasuke as he looked at the, earth, scroll in his hand. Give it to Sakura, said Naruto. What? No, you should have it Naruto. You're the strongest of us all, so isn't it the smart choice for you to have it? She said. Yes, it is. But me and Sasuke have been doing the heavy lifting for a while, so you hold it. He said. Sasuke then threw the scroll to Sakura's shaking hands. All right, if you want. She said as she put it in her ninja pouch. The team came to the ground when Naruto told them to. What's is it, Naruto? Asked Sakura. I need to take a pee. He said as he started to pull down his cargo shorts. Sasuke and Sakura turned around quicker than ever. EWWW. Naruto. I don't want to see that, said Sakura with a shout. The team then felt a presence in the area, and some kunai was thrown at them, but were cut into little pieces, thanks to Naruto's wind jutsu. A masked mist ninja then charged at them, but before he could get into ten feet of the team, his head rolled off his shoulders and landed in front of Sakura. EWWWWW. No, no, no. She said as she covered her eyes, but was too late as the image was in her mind. I am finish, said a happy Naruto, he never killed someone while peeing before. Naruto, you knew that he was following us didn't you? That's why you stopped to think that we dropped our guard, said Sasuke to Naruto. Him, I'm glad Sasuke got what I was doing, Sakura only screamed. How useless, he said, making her feel bad about screaming like a fangirl again. The team were walking on the ground, when there was a major blast of wind towards them, forcing them to use their chakra to stay to the ground. What's going on, yelled Sasuke, as he turned his Sharingan on. I don't know, yelled Sakura. The wind died down to reveal a Kusa ninja with long black hair, and crazy grin on her face. Let's play, shall we? She said. You too. Focus, this person is stronger than Zabuza, I can feel it. Stay on your guard, stated Naruto, causing the two the focus on their target. Oh, ordering the two around. I guess you're their leader, but aren't you the demon of Konoha, said the Kusa ninja, trying to mess with Naruto's head. Yes, I am, and I'll kill you if you don't take me seriously. 
I show no mercy, especially when no other Konoha ninja are around to report me. Said a calm Naruto. Him, yes, but we shall see. After this, she yelled and blasted the team with key, only for it to be absorbed by Naruto. Using your key won't help you here. I can absorb key and make it my own power. Said Naruto, surprising the Kusa female, and Sasuke and Sakura, never knowing about this power Naruto had. I see, interesting. Said the Kusa ninja. Now have some back, yelled Naruto as he blasted some key at the Kusa ninja, causing her to freeze up. What? How can a genin have such a strong key, key even strong enough to make me scared? Thought a disguised Orokimaru. While frozen, Sasuke ran up to the female, and casted some hand signs. Katen, Phoenix flower technique he yelled and sent large fireballs towards a now recovered Orokimaru. He jumped over the attack, only to met Sakura, right in front of him. Doton, Earth Dragon Blast, yelled and a dragon came from underneath Orokimaru, forcing him to substitute with a log in the forest area. Coming in contact with the ground, he tried to move, but noticed that he was stuck as the earth below him held him down. Doton, earth holding technique. She said. Naruto came from behind Orokimaru, without him noticing, and clawed at his back, causing Orokimaru to scream. Shit, this isn't good. I didn't sense that boy at all. What kind of team is this, thought a very surprised Orokimaru. Sasuke sent some kunai with explosive tags toward Orokimaru. Orokimaru switched again with a log, only to find himself in taijutsu with Sakura. She sent her uppercut, in which he leaned back from and kicked up at Sakura. She caught the kick, and bent all the way back, picking up Orokimaru, and slamming him down on the ground behind her. Orokimaru transformed his legs into a snake tail and got out of Sakura's strong grip, and ran towards Sasuke in a speed he couldn't react in time, and got punched in his midsection, causing him to fall back. Orokimaru was going to go for another, only if Naruto didn't jump on his back, wrapping his legs around Orokimaru's arms, and Naruto's arms around his neck. Sakura, now. He yelled. Doton, stone spear, and a stone with a sharp point grew underneath Orokimaru, but he leaned back, only causing him to get scratched on his shoulder. The Naruto on Orokimaru's back started to glow, until it exploded. The real Naruto came from a bush far away from the blast zone. Exploding clone technique, I wished you would have got caught in the explosion, I wish to end this silly game of cat and mouse. Said Naruto, as Sasuke and Sakura jumped next to him. How good can a group of genin be? This is lasting too long, I'm starting to attract attention, but first. And Orokimaru started to do hand signs. Summoning Jutsu, he yelled and summoned a very, very large snake. Let's see how long you last from my friend, said Orokimaru. But then Orokimaru felt the air behind him change, so he jumped up to see his snake being cut up by an unseen force. When he landed on a tree branch, he saw his whole snake cut up. What? How did this happen? He yelled. He looked over to see a smirking Naruto. I told you, I show no mercy. He said. Orokimaru was speechless. Even he couldn't do something like that, and even do it that quick. My god, that boy is far stronger than me. He thought. So he pulled off his fake face and sat down on the branch he was on. Well, if I were to continue this battle, I would lose. So first, I congratulate you, you stood up against the snake Sanon, Orokimaru, he said as he looked down at their surprised faces. I came here for reason, to give the Uchiha my mark. He said while looking at Sasuke. What mark? asked Sasuke. Well, my curse mark, of course. If you let me give it to you, you are a couple more steps at finding your brother, Sasuke. Said Orokimaru. Atachi, said Sasuke with wide eyes. You said it would make the Uchiha stronger, said Naruto. Yes, very strong. With it, he is granted that he would make it to the finals of this exam. Said Orokimaru. Give it to him, said Naruto. What? I don't want that from him. He yelled. Too bad, I told you that I would get you stronger, I didn't say how. Said Naruto as he turned and punched Sasuke in the stomach, making him gasp at the powerful punch. Sasuke fell to the ground in pain, and Sakura tried to heal him, only for Orokimaru to be faster as he extended his neck to Sasuke's and bit down, causing Sasuke to scream loudly. A-A-A-A-A-R-R-R-R-G-G-G-H-H-H. He yelled and then fainted. I should take care of the Nine Tails brat now. 
Thought Orokimaru and did some hand signs that looked familiar. That's the five-pronged seal. Thought Naruto. He took the chance and ran towards Orokimaru. No. Naruto. Stop. Yelled Kurama from his mind, but he didn't listen. He let Orokimaru lift his hoodie up and press his fingers on the seal. Five-pronged seal, yelled Orokimaru, as he closed up Naruto's seal on his stomach. No. N-A-A-A-A-R-R-R-R-U-U-U-U-U-T-O-O-O-O-O. Yelled Kurama. Her yelling started get quieter and quieter until Naruto couldn't hear or sense her presence at all. I'll be taking my leave now. Said Orokimaru as he melted into the ground. Naruto, Sasuke's really hurt. She yelled to him. But Naruto wasn't listening, he wasn't listening to anything. He could feel his mind come back. He could feel that he had better control over his body. His chakra his mind. I'm, free. He whispered. He looked up to the sky with a smile that has never appeared on his face. Pure happiness. I am free. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.